In the winter of the late 1800s in a wind-cut valley of northern Iceland where the ground froze harder than iron and the sun sometimes disappeared for weeks a man quietly finished building a shelter so strange that even his closest neighbors shook their heads in disbelief because instead of raising tall wooden walls like everyone else instead of show showing strength and pride above the ground he dug his home down into the earth laid thick stone walls around it and sealed the top of the heavy roof of stone slabs and turf making it look less like a house and more like a burial mound and when people saw it for the first time they laughed and whispered that he had built his own grave and would freeze to death inside it once real winter came they told him that snow would crush the roof that moisture would seep in and turn the walls to ice that no man could survive underground in a land already cold enough to kill livestock in minutes and they mocked him openly at the market, calling his shelter foolish, backward, and desperate, especially at a time when imported timber and European-style houses were becoming symbols of progress and modern thinking. But the man said very little, because he had grown up listening to older stories, stories passed down quietly by farmers and shepherds who remembered a time when Icelanders did not fight the cold by standing tall against it, but by hiding from it, using the earth itself as insulation. This was not a new idea even if it looked strange to modern eyes because for centuries, Icelandic families had built turf houses with stone foundations walls packed with layers of soil and grass and roofs so thick they could grow wild plants, and these homes were not accidents or signs of poverty, they were carefully engineered responses to one of the harshest climates on earth, where wood was scarce winds were violent, and winter temperatures could fall far below minus 30 degrees Celsius turning exposed buildings into ice boxes overnight. What made this man different, and what made people laugh harder? was that he went even further than tradition, lowering his shelter deeper into the ground and reinforcing the roof with stone instead of wood, creating a structure that relied almost entirely on thermal mass and earth insulation, principles that scientists would later explain but that he understood only through observation, memory, and survival instinct. And while others trusted thin walls and imported materials, he trusted the slow, steady warmth of the soil beneath his feet. As autumn faded and the first heavy snow arrived, neighbors continued to mock him betting quietly on how long he would last before abandoning the shelter, and begging for space in someone else's house because in Icelandic history winter was not romantic or poetic, it was deadly claiming lives through cold hunger, and exposure, and a bad decision could mean not seeing spring again. Yet the man stayed, sealing his entrance carefully, managing smoke through a narrow stone channel, and letting the shelter settle into the earth like it belonged there. Then came the freeze that no one expected a brutal cold snap driven by arctic winds that pushed temperatures down to nearly minus 30 degrees Celsius cold enough to crack wooden beams, shatter poorly built walls and turn breath into ice before it reached the air. And as the storm howled across the valley, neighbors huddled in their houses feeding fires all night, watching frost creep along the inside walls fearing roof, collapse and wondering quietly if the man in the buried shelter was already dead. For days the storm did not break, and when it finally eased, people emerged to assess the damage. Finding frozen livestock split timbers and homes that had lost all heat once their fires failed, and with a mix of dread and curiosity, they walked toward the low mound where the strange shelter sat half buried in snow, expecting silence, expecting tragedy. But what they found instead would change how they looked at warmth, shelter, and survival forever. Before we reveal what happened inside that stone-roofed shelter during one of the coldest freezes in living memory, take a moment to subscribe to the channel because stories like this show how forgotten knowledge often holds the answers we need today and in the next section. You will discover why the shelter did not freeze, why the fire barely needed fuel, and why the ground itself became the man's greatest ally. When the neighbors finally uncovered the entrance and knocked on the door of the buried shelter, they did not hear the hollow silence of death, but instead the sound of movement, calm and steady. And when the door opened, warm air spilled out into the frozen morning like breath from the earth itself, and the man stepped forward alive alert and shockingly unharmed while the temperature inside his shelter had remained just above freezing even as the world outside had plunged toward minus 30 degrees a difference so dramatic that it felt impossible to those standing in the snow. What they had witnessed was not luck or miracle, but physics working quietly beneath their feet, because the ground, even in the coldest climates, maintains a relatively stable temperature just a few feet below the surface, and by sinking his shelter into the earth, the man had wrapped himself in a natural blanket that slowed heat loss to a crawl, while the thick stone walls absorbed warmth during the day and released it slowly at night, acting as a thermal battery long before the term existed. Unlike wooden houses that lost heat the moment a fire weakened, his shelter did not depend on constant fuel, because stone and earth do not cool quickly, and the heavy roof, layered with turf and soil, blocked wind entirely, preventing the most dangerous form of heat loss, and inside, moisture was controlled through careful ventilation, stopping condensation from freezing the walls, a detail learned from generations of Icelandic builders who understood that warmth was not about fire alone, but balance. Historical records and archaeological studies confirm that turf and stone shelters like this consistently outperformed wooden structures during extreme winters, and in some cases remained habitable for centuries, because while timber rotted and roofs collapsed, 
The earth stayed where it was, unmoved by storms, indifferent to temperature swings, and while outsiders often saw these homes as primitive or poor, survival statistics told a very different story, showing lower mortality during harsh winters among families living in earth-sheltered homes. As neighbors compared their cracked beams and frozen interiors to the steady warmth of the buried shelter, mockery turned into quiet respect, and some began to ask questions, wanting to know how deep the shelter was dug, how thick the stone walls needed to be, and how the smoke escaped without pulling heat away, and for the first time the man spoke more openly, explaining that the shelter was not about hiding from the world, but cooperating with it, using what the land already offered instead of fighting it. Over the following winters, others experimented with similar designs, reinforcing traditional turf houses with more stone, lowering floors, thickening roofs and reducing exposure. And while not everyone abandoned wooden homes, the laughter faded, replaced by a renewed respect for old methods that had been dismissed too quickly in the rush toward modernity and even today. Preserved Icelandic turf houses stand as quiet proof that these structures were not crude shelters but highly adapted systems built for survival. What makes this story even more striking is how closely it aligns with modern passive house principles. Geothermal insulation, an earth-sheltered architecture now praised by engineers and climate scientists. Because the man who was mocked did not invent something new, he simply trusted what history, environment, and observation had already proven to work, and in doing so, he survived a freeze that destroyed more advanced homes around him. But the story does not end with admiration or quiet acceptance because decades later as Iceland modernized further and these shelters were abandoned, many were lost, buried or deliberately dismantled, dismissed once again as outdated relics and the knowledge nearly disappeared, raising an important question about how often humanity forgets solutions that once kept us alive. If this story is making you rethink what progress really means, subscribe and stay with the channel. Because in the final section we will explore what happened to these shelters over time, why their lessons matter more than ever today and how a buried stone roof from the past might hold answers for the future we are heading toward. As the 20th century arrived and Iceland moved toward concrete, steel, and centralized heating, the old turf and stone shelters were slowly abandoned, not because they failed, but because they did not fit the image of a modern nation, and many were left to collapse or were deliberately removed, seen as reminders of hardship rather than symbols of ingenuity. And yet historians later notice something unsettling, because during fuel shortages, storms and power failures, the new buildings struggled, while the old buried shelters, where they still existed, remained stable, quiet, and warm. Archaeological surveys conducted in the mid-1900s found that many earth-sheltered homes had maintained internal temperatures far above freezing without active heating, even after decades of disuse, proving that their design was not fragile or temporary, but deeply resilient, and as climate researchers began studying traditional architecture worldwide, they discovered similar patterns among underground homes in China sod houses on the American plains, and stone-covered shelters across Scandinavia, all built on the same principle of thermal mass and earth insulation. The man who had been mocked never wrote books or patented designs and his name was not preserved in history books, but his shelter told a story louder than words, a story about humility before nature, about learning instead of conquering and about survival through adaptation, rather than force, and in a world now facing extreme temperatures, energy shortages, and climate instability. That lesson feels less like history and more like warning. Today modern architects are returning to these ideas designing earth-sheltered homes, green roofs and passive heating systems that mirror what that Icelandic farmer already knew. And while technology adds efficiency the foundation remains ancient simple and proven, reminding us that progress is not always a straight line forward but sometimes a careful step back to recover what we forgot. So when people once laughed at a buried shelter with a stone roof, they were not laughing at weakness, they were laughing at wisdom they did not yet understand. And when the minus 30 degree freeze came, it was not strength, money, or modern materials that decided who stayed warm, but respect for the land and the quiet intelligence of old knowledge. If you found this story meaningful, take a moment to like the video and share it with someone who believes history has nothing left to teach us. Because stories like this prove that survival often belongs to those who listen. And if you want more real historical stories where forgotten ideas outperformed modern thinking, subscribe now, because the next one might change how you see the world around you.